Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to The Toast and happy Monday. I know it's dreadful, but there's so much that needs to be discussed. Like, don't even worry about it, okay? It takes the dread out of Monday because I just, there's so much to say. So much has been unfolding over the weekend. Aside from all the drama, the Vanderpump Rules drama, like, so much so much content this weekend like Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm all caught up on pop culture which is not a feeling I feel very often these days so I just have a lot to say yeah there's so much to discuss of course pump rules major bombshell on a Friday afternoon and you know like the way you know this is a big deal because it was a Friday afternoon like people don't care about stuff if you're looking to bury a piece of news you release it on a Friday afternoon the way it has carried through, it is everywhere. Twitter, like people who don't know. It's kind of like, remember when like two months ago, the Try Guys had the, like big drama and everyone was talking about it. And we're like, what the fuck is the Try Guys? That's happening for people who don't know about Vanderpump Rules. Yeah, because this is one of the craziest things that could have happened in the Vanderpump Rules universe. In and reality TV period, honestly. Yeah, and things keep coming out so like even this morning there's like new news and there's just so many layers to this and everybody has an opinion there's so many cast members it's just you could go on and on and on and everyone's getting involved nobody's staying silent except for Raquel yeah we'll talk about everyone's getting involved nobody's staying silent sure we'll talk Um, I'm also all just caught up on Vanderpump Rules I figured you know I need to get back on track because shit's about to pop off. Apparently they were filming. Yeah, so Zach and I watched Vanderpump Rules Friday night after the news dropped and we've been keeping up and I should have watched that episode last week, but I didn't. And the way I literally could not even watch the show, I was so blinded by what had happened. Like everything Raquel did, I was like, how dare she? Like, no, literally. <laughs> it was so crazy to watch it knowing what we know. It's almost frustrating because Everything we're seeing, yeah, it's like cool to like look for, now that we know, look for clues. But it's annoying. Like, what's going on? No, but I need, I need a live stream right now. What's so crazy is I was looking at the dates. So they said they've been having an affair for seven months, which would mean it started in July 2022. The Schwartz and Sandy's Daily Mail Party was in July of 2022. Oh. So like the affair is starting to happen. And it's oh, it's oh. crazy to watch people lying. This whole like Schwartz kissing thing is complete right. decoy. Yeah. And you're just like watching everyone lie. Mm. And so I, I if, if it was completely irrelevant and they didn't even have started anything, like I would say, yeah, like let's catch yeah. up. But I find this fascinating. I thought we were like a few months out, honestly. So that's super interesting. Thank you for sharing. Jackie and I are going to be breaking down the entire saga um, as one of the stories. We're also going to be talking about Chris Rock's new special, which live streamed on Netflix, which was pretty cool. I watched it not live. Um, I watched it live. Ex- I was a part of exciting. something. No, that's exciting. I was a part of something. We waited. We turned on early. Leslie Jones was doing stand up. I saw. And then we watched live. And it was, there was so much to discuss. It's a story. We're going to talk about the biggest bombshells and our overall thoughts. Great. Um, SNL was also on. It was a big weekend for the Kelseys, Travis, Jason, and Kelsey. Um, I have to say, it was a really, really, really like atrocious episode. Like maybe one of the worst in terms of writing. I Travis, there was like a few funny moments. Like Travis um, as an American Girl dad, like single doll dad. Like that was funny and cute and he had some good lines. I thought Heidi Gardner did a really actually hysterical job in the sketch where she runs into her boyfriend in the bar. And then Jason Kelsey Jason ends up being Kelsey her next. Jason Kelsey saved that sketch. The it show also- was positively dreadful. And I <laughs> only watch SNL when there's someone that I want to see. And every single time I come away with the same thought, like, this is the greatest comedic minds in America. Like, aren't we embarrassed? Like, yeah. I found that to be embarrassing that that's what passes for comedy. Yeah, there were a few sketches that, like, didn't make me clench my butt cheeks and cringe. Yeah. Straight, so male, straight male friend hilarious I don't know about hilarious but it was no, a really it good was, concept it was, it was executed way, well and I have to say Travis Kelsey did a really good job of being like an actor in the lines and and the delivery and and not losing focus like I was very impressed by him as a host I thought he did a really good job in the sketches that were terrible same and in his opening monologue he did say this wasn't his first time hosting a show I love that he referenced catching Kelsey and they like showed us a clip I can't it. believe they showed us a clip I know, no. And it makes sense because NBC is Peacock, whatever. Um, Obsessed. Like, obsessed beyond belief. We're all thinking it, and now he finally said it. And it's just, it's a joy to 
to fe- to be to be seen like that. No, I I just can't believe that like catching Kelsey was referenced on SNL because it's such. Even when he said like it's owned by NBC Universal, so it should be on Peacock, but they but said nah. Not. They said nah. Um, I wish they they're really missing out. out. They're missing I w- out. I wish they did a little bit more with his family. Like Jason and his mom were in the opening monologue, and then Jason had a one second thing in the in the sketch. I wish they kind of leaned on them more. Um, I don't know if, whose choice that was, but uh, okay, like give us more. I feel like maybe it was because Jason like couldn't get up to New York until maybe the last minute, so they weren't gonna like give him lines and stuff. And he was a pro, honestly. When he went in that sketch, I was like, he's a good actor. Like I felt. I felt like I was watching, you know, a sketch. It was a real sketch. Yeah, it was so good when that moment happened. The rest was so terrible. Yeah. I can't, like, it was really horrible television. Yeah. I was in shock. Yeah, me and Ben were, like, shocked. And I was so ready. Like, I have a low bar. If I'm excited, I was so excited about Kelsey Ballerini. I was so excited about Travis Kelsey. Like, my bar was low for me to like it. And so for me to, me and Ben both walk away and be like, wow, that was really not funny. It was, it must have been really bad. No, it was painful and embarrassing. And we got so much behind the scenes content of Chase and Kelsey. Like Chase was there the whole time and they were ha- hanging out with Travis. Chase? And it was Stokes. Oh, I didn't see anything. Oh, he was posting like a ton of photos. And Where? Like, on his Instagram? Yeah, like so proud of you, my love. On and his stories? Yes. Damn, I don't follow him and I actually just was on his Instagram in the feed checking stuff out and it probably was in the stories and I missed it stories and Kelsey posted some pics of them and she made some TikToks because he, he was like there the whole weekend like for rehearsals and stuff it was really cute that's insane that they're so serious and public no it's crazy also um we were wrong she performed two songs from rolling up the welcome mat she did blindsided and penthouse she sounded really good vocally on penthouse like she because she has been playing that song live. that's not the first time she's played it live on her tour in the uk this last week she played it at every single show so she's had like good practice and mm-hmm. she's worked on like some new some new runs and some new riffs and it sounded really good and then blindsided was the first time she had ever played it she added that new verse at the end uh, which was clearly like direct to Obvious. Leave her them. You you said you would have searched the her whole world over. Yeah, right. Okay. And that. What's so his funny song. is when we talked about his song on the show like two weeks ago. I said I was saying how I thought his song was sweet. Like I would have searched the whole world over for you and I'd be a shoulder for you. And you said, Yeah, sure, okay. Yeah, like well, we just found out that you didn't. No, so. and, and I was, but you didn't. But you did it. And that was the message from her verse. And I enjoyed that very much. I did too. She sounded amazing. She looked amazing. I like that she ha- tried to do Blindsided as like a pop moment. And then yeah. have her like serious piano ballad. I Stand By Those Are Not The Songs I Would Have Chosen. I really wish she did something from Heart First. Like the world will ne- like. I, I get it. Like, I get the choice. Like, the EP is having this moment. You're right. It's like this very gra- grassroots Olivia Rodrigo thing. So people are tuning in for the EP. But those people who are tuning in are just bandwagoners. Like, they don't no, even those know people the magic. Tu- those people who are tuning in for Kelsey love Kelsey. Like, I love Kelsey. I'll listen to any song she performs and I'm going to love it. But I just feel no, like... No, I disagree. Like, all the hoopla, people who didn't know who she was, like, they're here for the EP. Like, the EP is connecting with really? so many people. They don't even know. Yeah, like, they don't even know the great hits prior to this has the ep really won her that many new fans musically i think so i think so especially then with call her daddy yeah yeah no i understand like publicly like in the like as a personality that with the call her daddy and the drama and the divorce like people now are talking more about her but musically i think so i really do especially like from what i've seen on tiktok like people who have never really ventured into country and certainly people who might not have known who she was but who resonate with you know either divorce or breaking up or whatever it's speaking to a lot of people so i get the decision it was a good strategy No, and i would have been happy with two songs off of rolling up the welcome mat that were a different two like even well uh what's the first one Mountain with a view mountain with a view and the last one lose me again. yeah no penthouse oh Oh, okay, yeah. I just, like, I am so, I'm still so in my subject to change era. Like, I feel it's so good. Like, it's, and for people to have really heard that, like, I feel like that's so Kelsey and that's really her her general genre. This uh, EP is, it's not really always what she, the type of stuff she puts out. So I would have loved to have seen, like, Heart First, Little Things, if you go down, something. But Just, like, a bigger song. I wanted a bigger song. Yeah, I agree. Like, and a really Kelsey song. 
But she she sounded amazing. You could tell she was singing live. Like she hit like every note. She has a beautiful voice. I that's loved what, her look. That's what you get when you dive into country. Like you're not gonna get some flop who doesn't know how to sing and is gonna like have background vocals that you can't even hear their voice because like they're not as good live. You're never gonna get that with country, and that's why I stand country music. Like they never they never disappoint. And Turdy Lou, it's not surface lyrics. Certainly not surface lyrics. And I think Ben would say the same. I think he would say the same. I think he has said the same. I can tell you for a fact that he has. <laughs> um, so it's just like a big content weekend. Yeah. Other than that, how was your weekend on a personal social level? It was great. I read a lot. I did. What are you uh, reading? I finished yesterday in just a matter of hours that thriller that's all over my Goodreads, The Perfect Marriage. You've probably seen the cover, Two Rings yeah. and a Lot of Blood. Excellent. Really, I tore through it, gave it four out of five stars. Ooh, kept me on, I'll add it to my kept, list. Kept me on the edge of my seat. They did not tell you what you wanted to know till literally the bitter end. That's annoying. I would have given it five stars, but the ending, I don't know. I, I wouldn't have chosen, you know, that person to be the murderer, you know? Ooh. Okay. It felt like a little, um, but it was a great book and it really, it held my attention all day. I couldn't put it down. So that was great. I also read Mile High, which is like a, a series of books that everyone said I would really like. And I didn't really like it. So I'm not going to read the second series. But then that always happens. People are like, the second is so much better. So then you're like, all right. And then you get sucked in. But I, I, I read it. It wasn't my favorite. And I'm moving on. When is the second so much better? Oh, that's Ever. a good question. Ted 2 is a real contender. Not, oh no. No, no, but it's, but Ted 2 is just as it's, good. No, not just as good. It's good. It's yeah. really, really, really good. Ted 1 is masterful. Masterpiece, yeah. No, so the next second, on my list. Descendants 2 is really good, I would say. Hmm, wait, I got one. High School Musical no. 3. Three. three. One in, always 1 and 3 are good, except in Descendants, it's 1 and 2, and 3 is horrible. Twilight New Moon second is probably my least favorite. Hangover one and three are good. Mm. It's the curse of the second film. Mm -hmm. But there was something perfect. There was something recently where like the second was kind of better than the first that we were just talking about. I don't know if we'll be able to grasp it. Was it Pitch Perfect? No, I don't even. No, oh my god, two was so bad. They were like at camp and like it was horrible. At camp? Yeah, I think they were at like acapella camp. I just remember like Rebel Wilson on a lake. Make it stop. Oh, and then they went to the international... Three. We bring it back. That was three. Oh, okay, okay. Because that one was excellent with the Haley Steinfeld. Um, we were just saying, if anyone can remember, a two that was almost better than the one. We were just saying. Yeah. Well, no, you, your theory stands correct even with Bring It On. <laughs> bring It On sequel. What was the second one? Because the third one was Solange and Hayden Panettiere, this, which is No, that wasn't. Perfect. I don't think that was the third one. I think there were a lot. But the second one was with it was in college. It was some girl named like Winifred. It's always a Winifred. Okay, so you're saying Solange is not the second. No. Because that no. one's so good. But those aren't sequels. Those are just like remakes. Spinoffs. You're right. Bring It On is, is kind of its own caliber of yeah, film. Trilogy. You can't compare. All right, well, I guess we'll never know. My big fat Greek wedding. <gasps> yes, yes, the second is excellent. You know what? The second is really, it's not just as good, but it's excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's also like, they didn't run into a sequel. There was this like this grassroots organic movement begging for 10 years, give us a sequel. So it really, I feel like sometimes they give a sequel and it's like, well, nobody really asked. But yeah. not with Greek wedding. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Well, I feel like we have so much business to handle today that we should really dive. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. How was your weekend? Thank you, Turdy Lou. It was great. It was low key. Lots of family time. I sliced my fingers open, trying mm. to cut up some cheese. And it was really nice. Other than the slicing, um, just great times with Harry, Liz. And Harry, Harry was like, what? Saying what about me? Like, don't hold back. Just tell me everything. Oh, he was just saying like, Auntie Koya would love this. Auntie Koya should be here. Where's Auntie Koya? And I just kind of had to redirect him because I didn't want him right. to like, focus on what's not here, you know? Right. And he was probably like, wow, I could really use a song right now. Yeah. He, yeah. he, needed, he needs a lot of songs to get through the day. And what about Pregio? How are you feeling? I'm feeling good, thank you. So much better, like in this trimester, in this season, like still fatigued, but way le like night and day. So... Just trying to do everything I can in the hours where I have energy. 
And um, mm, what was my follow up question? It was kind of a good one. <laughs> oh, does it also just feel so much better? Like now that people know, like, like you can like wear a shirt that's like whatever, you know? Yeah. Yeah, not so much for wear a shirt, but um, just so that like I can just be honest about like how I'm feeling. Like if I were yeah. to say, if you were saying, how were you this weekend? And I was just like good and tired. It's like, okay, lazy bitch. Anything yeah, else? Right, now right, it's right, like, right, right, right. I'm pregnant. What do you got I'm to creating say? life. I'm creating like, what, what are, are you, you doing? What did you do this weekend, wench? Yeah, because I created a life. Creating. It's a long process. Yeah, maybe I created a life too. Bomb chicka wah wah. I would love that. Join no, maternity I leave. I didn't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I did. Okay. Let's dive in. Okay. To the to Fast what? Spice stories that you absolutely need to know today. Like if you're going to listen to one episode. Actually, I don't want to say the rest of the week. I don't want to say nothing's going to happen. But this, we is never a, know. this is a big one. So without further ado, here are the Fast Spice stories that you need to know. And the fast five stories that you need to know are brought to you by ZocDoc. So if you've scoured the internet playing Dr. Roulette for questionable reviews, ZocDoc, you have a trusted guide to connect you to your favorite doctor that you just haven't met yet. So when you're really not feeling your best and just trying to hold it together, finding great care shouldn't take up all your energy. Ain't that the truth? When uh, that's where ZocDoc comes in using their free app that millions of users rely on. You can field the right doctor that meets your needs and fits your schedule. You'll book an appointment with a few taps in their app and start feeling better faster today. So I have used ZocDoc for many things. I feel like later in life I'm having new problems where I need new specialists. You know, it's not the same old, same old. Can't keep going to my pediatrician. I've got jaw problems. I've got back problems. I need specialists. And ZocDoc is a great resource with, whether you're looking for new doctors or like Jackie, moving to a new town, not having your OG go-tos. ZocDoc will find a doctor that fits your needs, that takes your insurance, that has a time that's right for you. So you're not wasting your time getting on the phone, which is like the most uncomfortable thing ever. And calling up a million doctors, like asking a million questions. ZocDoc takes a lot of the awkwardness out of looking for a doctor. So with ZocDoc, there are no alarms and no surprises. Go to ZocDoc.com slash toast and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available with 20, within 24 hours. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, and are available when you need them, and they treat almost every condition under the sun. So that's ZocDoc.com slash toast, ZocDoc.com slash toast. Many doctors are available within 24 hours. Today's episode is also brought to you by Allbirds. When it comes to quality, Mother Nature knows best, and you can take that idea and run with the Wool Runners from Allbirds. This year, trade your synthetic footwear for wool runners. They are crafted with premium supernatural materials that are comfy and durable, so you can run to the ends of the earth or just to the store. Yeah, I'm not running to the ends of the earth, but I do wear sneakers quite a bit, especially when I travel. And on Wednesday, I'm taking like the longest flight ever. I have such a long day. I will be wearing my Allbirds. They're easy to slip on and off for security they're also just really comfortable i feel like my feet get really hot in sneakers especially when i'm like walking around these big airports which is a conversation i can't really get into right now but i have a problem with um all birds are a great travel shoe they keep your feet cool they're really comfortable if you're on your feet for long amounts of hours i feel like i maybe have flat feet like i get really like bad pain in my feet enough about me but all birds really i can stand around got walk a nice around arch them. they do you can walk around in them for a really long time um and I just really like them. So the wool runners are built using premium supernatural materials with a low environmental impact. So you'll get next level comfort with ZQ certified superfine merino wool that's temperature regulated, moisture wicking, and itch free. Oh my God, I'm so glad they brought that up. Itch free, like what is that when you're wearing sneakers? Like you gotta put a ruler in your shoe just to scratch the middle of your arch. Like it's really annoying. It has to do with the materials in your shoe and all birds are making sure that you're getting, getting no itches in the middle of your flight. They're also machine washable, so they look as fresh as the day you got them. You don't have to worry about scuffing them up or whatever, running through the rain. Just throw them in the wash. Um, this year, take a big step forward with Mother Nature with the Allbirds Wool Runner. Discover your perfect pair at allbirds.com today. That's A-L-L-B-I-R-D-S dot com. Thank you, Claudia. You're welcome, Jackie. Our first story, we'll start from the beginning of the news. Friday afternoon, TMZ reported that Tom Sandoval and Ariana Maddox called it quits amid allegations that he cheated with co-star Raquel Levis. Show sources told TMZ Ariana found about 
found out about the alleged cheating in the last couple of days, so last week, and ended things with Tom shortly thereafter. They're told producers got word of what went down and made the decision to fire up the cameras with the entire cast to document the fallout in the coming days. And the hope is they'll be able to get it into the season currently airing. Yes, yeah, so oh. they weren't filming anymore because the season's airing. But they got cameras in there. So I'm sure the season will end and then it will be like four months later. Yep. Everyone's doing interviews. They're filming people's conversations. What's interesting, TMZ says, is that Ariana was with Tom as recently as Wednesday to celebrate the release of his new single and perform with his band. However, sources close to Tom tell TMZ the two of them have been on the outs for some time now. So I think there was rockiness in their relationship. But to have a seven month affair with someone's best friend is, you know, beyond rockiness. Yeah. Uh so the way it went down from what I understand and like literally I feel like because there are so many cast members who actually know what happened like they're just telling every yeah everyone who li- will listen so after Tom's show Wednesday night he had a Tom and the most extra show which I have to talk about yeah uh Raquel saw a text pop up I mean Ariana saw a text pop up from Raquel on Tom's phone and it was a video of Raquel very sexual in nature and then she started scrolling through texts and saw more inappropriate things and confronted Tom and found out they had been having a seven month affair. Um, she, Raquel had just done Watch What Happens Live with Sheena. Sheena mm-hmm. found out about it and apparently slapped Raquel in the face and is no longer speaking with Raquel. Well, I have to say, one of my initial thoughts when catching up on the season was like, my God, did Sheena plant her flag in the wrong friend? Yeah. Like she's really writing, like making enemies out of everyone just to like support Raquel. She knows horrible this season. But this episode. Horrible. But this episode, like that's a separate conversation. This episode is not about Sheena. Um, but she's horrible. So I feel like for me, this would have blown up anyway. But the second the TMZ article came out, James Kennedy posted a screenshot of the article. Which made it. Because his- when I first saw this, I was like, there's no way that's true. Like, yeah. Or, no way no but when James posted it it said this is true and then everyone else started getting in so for me like James really blew it up um and I I felt so many emotions I mean first like I not to make everything about me like I felt so vindicated because I feel like for years like there have been like you know a decent amount of people who are obsessed with Tom Sandoval and like I've just known from like I just know like I can fucking read people like I knew this man was fucking horrendous and to watch his like midlife crisis with his stupid band like sorry you can't sing to watch this and just watch how over the last years he has really been horrible to Katie to Tom to Stassi to Jax and I know like nobody feels bad for Stassi and Jax but it's important in the context of like the history here um I hate this man I know this man is evil and I now have motherfucking proven everybody sees what I've been seeing for years I mean we've been saying this and I think a lot of people feel vindicated like I know a lot of people feel vindicated like because they have said like not trusted Tom over the years you know Lala feels very vindicated that she never really liked Raquel um I always thought Tom was like extremely cringe and self-centered and narcissistic and like obsessed with the show and the fame like to an and to a point of delusion like starting a band but this cheating on your girlfriend of 10 years with one of her best friends and have not just like we got we're drunk and we hooked up a right. seven month affair is fucking diabolical it is but when you really look into it it's really not Tom Sandoval was with Kristen for eight years and I know they claim that everything they did was like, you know, kosher. But like, I think we all know it wasn't. He I'm left- not convinced it wasn't. Uh, I kind of am. I think like everyone is like just kind of come to terms with it. And it was like, okay, whatever. But they're together and in love now. And they're like not married, but they're in this partnership. They have a house. Like, you know what? We all move on. Like even Kristen. Yeah, I don't. but even if there were some moments of like impropriety, I... Kristen and Ariana were not friends. Like th- this is it was the I- same I like group. There were a couple moments of like maybe kissing or something, but not. No, I mean this is next level. Like Ariana and Raquel being best friends, best friends, and it being a full on affair. Yeah, I honestly, it's so crazy. But I do think like how you get them is how you lose them, sort of thing. And I'm not in any way like blaming Ariana by any means. But I wasn't like once I sat down and thought about it, like I wasn't that shocked honestly the real shocking part is the Raquel of it all like not only would Tom choose a girl who's so close with his girlfriend but how Raquel could go the last seven months like being so up Ariana's ass 
going to all these things with Tom and Ariana. And we thought we, she was going for Ariana, but she was going for Tom. That's like a diabolical level, especially because what we've seen over the last few years with Raquel on the show is like she's kind of this like spineless mute. Like she doesn't really defend herself. She's kind of quiet. She remembers she cried last year because she couldn't even make a toast in front of a bunch of people. Like it's just she's not the type of girl you would expect this behavior from. No, I don't know who she is. Like, one, the Raquel we're seeing this season is different from Raquel's of the past, but we just, yes. you know, uh, attributed it to her, like, coming out of her shell, maybe making Being some single. mistakes along the way. She's obviously drinking a lot, so maybe having, you know, a rough night here or there, but, like, a seven-month affair is beyond, you know, yeah. getting a little too drunk. I don't understand this person. I don't know this person. How could you do something like this? To how yeah. could anyone do something like this to a friend, let alone someone who's, like brand for lack of a better word is like yeah. being nice and shy and sweet yeah it's um it's so crazy all the but all the castmates have spoken out I said this to you like two weeks ago like Raquel is gonna save this show and when I said it I didn't even know what she was up yep. to no but you're she so right. has become the center of the show and now in a huge way but no, we, and I know that these are people's lives but in terms of the show like this is people said the show would never be the same without like Jackson Stassi all the drama from season one the smacking Kristen and Jax this is pump 2.0 like I never expected it for me the show was on its way out like it would even though the season is good and their stuff the show was slowly dying this has breathed a new life into the franchise like everyone really should be thanking Tom and Raquel because so many people have started watching Banner Pump Rules this weekend, like who have never even watched a single episode. And people who watched for years but took time off know who Raquel and Tom yep. Sandoval and Ariana are. They're back in and they're watching this season now. And the people who have been watching, like me, who I, I've, I've just associated, like I don't need all the drama in order for me to like it. I just like some of the people. But now I'm like, oh my God, it's top of mind. So in that, from an entertainment value perspective, like they this have is huge. saved the show. 100% this and is And also, huge. like, for all the cast members who are so mad at Tom and Raquel, like, they can't stop talking about it. And they're, yeah. you know, going on Instagram stories and they're popping off and everyone... It's so weird how everyone feels the need to post Team Ariana. It's like, there's Duh. no other team to be on. No, literally. And I feel like I actually have had, like, a unique relationship with Ariana in terms of my... I really have never fully, like, loved her just because she's with Tom Sandoval. Like, I have a deep hatred and... I don't really understand how anyone could like him. But now that not only is she not with him, she probably fucking hates him. I feel like I'm about to build this ship so big for just Ariana. Like I feel I feel ready to stand like I've never stand before. I think that's how everyone feels both in the cast and outside of the cast. And she's always been like a really great level-headed yeah. character within the show. Always weird to us that she was with Tom and could be with Tom. but And defend Tom. That's always like her fatal flaw. Yeah, but she also then in private is like Tom. Mm. Yeah, you yeah, know, which she, I always respect. She's not like up his butt. So yeah, so true. I think this people are like those sorts of like feelings of loyalty towards someone and just like riding for them. That's I respect. what engenders. No, but like a really good show to have such strong like feelings of you want to see this person succeed so now everyone's like buying up her ready to make cocktails and everyone's trying to like you know throw their money in support of ariana boycotting tom tom and schwartz and sandys well so that brings me to tom sandoval's yes, statement i have it right here oh okay so tom sandoval was silent on the matter for you know uh, 24 48 hours and then he put out a note that he wrote saying hey I fully understand and deserve your anger and disappointment towards me, but please leave Schwartz, my friends and family, out of this situation. Schwartz specifically only found out about this very recently and most definitely did not condone my actions. This was a very personal thing. Also, Schwartz and Sandys might have my name on it, but also there are three other partners and 20 employees who especially rely on the restaurant for income from them and their families. Just like Tom, Tom, I'm a small part of a much bigger thing. Please direct your anger towards me and not them. They did nothing wrong. I'm so sorry that my partners, Greg, Brett, and Schwartz, and our employees have to suffer from my actions I will be taking a step back and a hiatus out of respect for my employees and partners I need some time to address everything else sorry for everything 
Okay, so like, tell me all you care about is money without telling me all you care about is money. Like, he didn't apologize to Ariana, to his friends. Like, he just apologized and was like, but please, like, don't take it out of my stupid fucking restaurant with the terrible name. Yeah, it's weird that this statement's not going to change anything for the people who are insistent on boycotting his businesses. But it's like, when you're a public figure, you get the success of your business because of your public persona. Like, and mm-hmm. they're all there for you when times are good. Like, yeah. if they're in your boat, they're in your boat when it sinks, too. Yeah, no, it's kind of delusional. I do I do feel bad for that guy, Greg, who's clearly like an actual businessman with experience and knowledge because uh, he was on the Schwartz and Sandy's Instagram responding to comments fighting for his life. Like, I feel bad for him because he put, you know, so much of his time, money and energy in, into two fucking morons. Um, and this, you know, when the pendulum swings high, it swings high. You know, Daily Mail party, everyone wants to be at our thing. We, we don't need to run any ads and people will be lining out the door. But when the pendulum swings the other way, you know, when your whole brand is, like you said, build off your public persona, you have to be able to withstand that too because that's the business you're in. Right. And when you make decisions in your personal life, like you have to know that they can affect your business because when your business is, is your personal life. Yeah. 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 The statement was trash. Um, and like, trust me, I get it. Like, I'm a business person too. Like, one of my major concerns at this time would be this business I just launched. But for, you know, public perception, like, my God, at least pretend to give a shit about Ariana or like the people you just stompled over in your affair. Like, right. to simply address this dumb fucking restaurant is, he's so, he's so calculated and so kind of, um, What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, he's he, like, he just, his intentions are so obvious. And the fact that he didn't even try and, and cover it up and, and and be subtle in his statement really just proves what kind of like low life he is. Well, there's nothing he could say right now, especially right now. Like, so then about, don't say anything about Ariana. There's no apology that like anybody wants to hear. Like, this is going to be like a long road to rehabilitation for his image that and you know an apology on Instagram is not gonna nobody wants to hear it right now but I think he thought that reminding people that there are people who work for the business that have families like would touch people's In hearts dear. yeah but again that's really not the responsibility of Bravo fans yeah it's not so that's all we have from this. him. Raquel is Lala. being quiet. Raquel, like there have been rumors about Raquel and her crisis PR team on Dumois mm-hmm. and what sort of route they're taking. They say that she's actually going to break up with Tom Sandoval, which I think she should not do. The mm-hmm. only way out of this is to be together forever. Yep. If she it breaks really up with Tom. It reminds me like, of Ariana. Sh- no, it doesn't remind me at all, honestly. It, like it does. Like it was so like... And then remember um, Vegas girl, like Kristen just really wanted to prove to everyone that like, yes, she's crazy, but like Tom made her crazy. Like she thinks he cheated with Ariana. He's also cheated with this Vegas girl. Like he is a cheater. And I feel as though she's been enormously vindicated. Oh, she has been, but I feel like she was for a while. And also in the fact that Tom and Kristen had a horrible relationship. And we saw that in every episode, every single day. And by the time they broke up, it was was like Halloween. We didn't even care. And the fact that there was someone there for Tom, that Tom could move on with it was like please go like uh, yeah we would love to see two people that shouldn't be together not be together yeah but th- even though there are rumors that they were going through a hard time which I do believe um you know after 10 years like they yeah. he also has these two restaurants he's put all of his money into it like I he's also annoying as fuck like I do believe yeah. that relationship wasn't peaking but they didn't have that like toxic quality like Tom and Kristen no, did no. it's something that you work through not like you go and have an affair with the girl's best friend I cannot get over this honestly like and you know what everyone was like oh what's wrong with Ariana she didn't want to get married bitch she better she's probably so fucking happy yeah that she could just walk out yeah they share a house together so it'll be like a little you know paperwork they don't have to go through a divorce like she's a queen she's so smart yeah and I feel like Tom Sandoval if he's smart but he's not and he's so egotistical like you would think he would just like whatever Ariana wants to do is like what we'll do because any pushback she gets from him she just all she needs to do is put on social media Tom's taking the house no totally (laughs) and and Ariana has been on the show for a really long time she I'm assuming does really well financially because she didn't do anything crazy you know she didn't start her and Katie are being so smart about this sandwich shop like looking for investors not doing anything too hasty they don't want it to be this huge space like they're taking it on slowly I feel like 
she's been really responsible financially. And Tom, when he was talking about Venmoing his bandmates and renting studio space, I didn't realize like he had to pay all the thousand dollars a day to play to pay for Schwartz and Sandy's. Right. So I not like open. He's, he's in a hole. Like he he flew his family out and and he couldn't cancel the flights. Like he. I feel like he's actually really not doing fi- well financially. And the fact that they're not married is a huge blessing for Ariana, who I feel like has been really smart with her Vanderpump money. And she's been on for a long time. So at this rate, she can't be making less than $30,000 an episode. Like she's doing really well. Oh, she's definitely making way more than that. Yeah. And right, she's not she's super flashy. No. Um, she started this little side hustle. Nothing crazy. Yeah. And even, she if, she, even if she just cashed her Vanderpump checks, like, she's doing really well and it doesn't right. seem like she has spending problems that we know about so i believe she has a podcast does she i think i don't think oh my god i could just all i see right now is like sheena i know we need to talk about sheena's ariana's podcast. door trying to get ariana on her podcast let me just look up I, ariana maddox no she doesn't sorry oh earth to ariana but it hasn't been updated since november okay so like no. She doesn't do it anymore. Yeah. Um, Sheena's trying to get the exclusive for shenanigans. Please. Her I like, was I was obsessed with that whole saga on the most recent episodes. Like, Sheena's so obvious. Like, my God, walking over. She, by the way, I forget that they keep saying Sheena lives far. Sheena, like, doesn't live in L.A. She lives by, like, the marina, like, literally 45 minutes away. So the fact that literally in the span of a week, she made, like, three trips to Tom Schwartz's apartment. One for the pregame, one to hang out with Sandoval, and then one to record the podcast. Like, loser. Loser. Like, I cannot get over it. I thought, like, honestly, I know we all treat Tom Schwartz like this village idiot, but, like, the way he's so easily manipulated by people like you didn't know what Sheena was doing and you didn't tell her hey Sheena cut that part out like he's so like dumb yeah he's so dumb he just like doesn't have a spine enough to say Sheena cut that out um yeah. but I did actually have some respect for him when he turned Raquel down at the same and he knew he, he didn't even think he was filming he turned her down before yeah. He's like, wait, are we still filming? Of course, eventually they do kiss at Sheena's wedding, but that is nothing. Like, whenever they will kiss, I'm just going to be... So... I, you know what? I'm going to feel worse for Schwartz because I'm going to be like Raquel was playing him this whole time as a cover for her affair with Sandoval. When she kisses Schwartz, she's having an affair with Sandoval already. So it's yeah. like... She's manipulating also, him. And it's like, we are supposed to be mad at Schwartz, but I'm actually going to feel sorry for him. The whole Schwartz and Raquel thing started because some rumor got released that at Coachella, Tom was kissing Raquel. Now, a lot of people say, like, maybe the rumor got twisted and, like, Tom Sandoval was kissing Raquel. And, like, Schwartz just, like, went with it. Like, oh, there's a silly rumor about me. Maybe, but the timeline, like, doesn't really I know. Up. I know, because Coachella's in April. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, my God, Sheena like has actually and this is saying a lot because I feel like she's looked really bad for many seasons this might be the worst she's ever looked um and now knowing what we know knowing that she's really isolating herself from everyone just to support Raquel and now Raquel is this like radioactive villain she looks really stupid she still has Ariana as like Ariana is her first friend on the show yeah and so for her to now throw her support behind Ariana like that is a life raft she can cling to but it's like when they're all hanging out at Ariana's house like Katie's not talking to her Mm -hmm. Lala Lala no Lala and her are like best friends sorry their kids their daughters are together every single day they're so so close well she just looks stupid so it's just Katie really yeah, by the way, I'm obsessed with Katie. Like, she's been so funny, and I love her friendship with Lala. Like, I know they're, like, the last two of that group who are still on the show. Like, Britney's out, and Stassi's out, and Kristen's out. Um, so they, like, really only have each other, but I feel like their friendship is really genuine, and they're, like, really... They're in, like, a similar place, but they're also in really different places in their lives, like sobriety and motherhood, but I feel like they have a really good friendship, and Katie's just being so funny. And honestly, I do agree with pretty much everything Katie has said thus far. Like, yeah, we had this agreement. Fine. You want to fuck Raquel? I'll run train through your restaurant. Like, that was so funny. Um, And I feel like she's justified. I know a lot of people are like, you're divorced. But, like, asking just not to dip in the friends group, like, is really not asking a lot. Unless it's the love of your life. It's not asking a lot. And especially, it's definitely not the, like, even if it is the love of your life, you don't go around to the love of your life. Hey, want to make out? Let's make out. I feel like it's high school. It's high school. It's so disrespectful. The fact that a friend of hers would be the one to come up with the idea and and sort of force them together and do all these, like, nefarious behind the scenes things and act like, no, I just want to have a pregame so she didn't have to go alone. Like, shut up. 
No, she, shut up. And like, I guess Katie did say that thing in Vegas because Katie didn't deny it. She just said like, I said it, but like, I don't feel that way anymore. Like, honestly, respect. That's like the most relatable fucking thing. Like, yeah, I said that and I don't mean it because I was like pretending to be mature or whatever, but like, I'm not. Yeah. When I was watching this most recent episode and like Katie eventually like brings Christina Kelly along, I was thinking like how miserable filming the show must be for Katie. She doesn't have any of her friends that she started yep. with. It's now all about these new people and the new people are just like now going after Schwartz like what the fuck what am I doing here because if she just didn't have to hang out with this group of people anymore like she wouldn't have if Schwartz goes and makes out with Raquel it's not a problem but she's one of three original cast members on the show still she's yep. making more money than all those other people that's not a check you just walk away from no so she has to keep showing up and keep yep. being miserable and keep watching tom sandoval and the most extras and oh keep God. hearing dj james kennedy spinning on the ones and twos no but you know what say what you want about dj james kennedy but like, i love him yeah like first of all he's <laughs> so unapologetically himself that like you actually have to respect it he's an amazing reality star like mm -hmm. he really is and he's done and said some horrible unforgivable things but there's something about him like you just keep coming back to and with his dj career like everyone made fun of him when he first started but you know what like he turned that see you next tuesday thing into a legitimate affair at sir he does like a really good job and you know what when tom sandoval was like we're so lucky to have dj james kennedy opening for us like he was right like your band is a fucking joke you can't fucking sing and you know what i've actually seen dj james kennedy DJ and he's pretty fucking great no and it's a great time it's a great idea like i feel like a few people from the show have made like uh IRL things happen for themselves like Stassi and her and her podcast and her yep, book and like book. she had so much success and like James did that with his DJ career not only does he DJ within the restaurants beautiful but yeah. he could go DJ at a club and like all these Vanderpump fans are going to come to want to see him like it's so smart everybody keeps trying to do stuff like that even the yep. restaurants like Tom Tom like that was yep. a success but it's not a shoe in and I was just saying to Zach because Zach just started watching Vanderpump again like this season I don't know why and we were talking about James and I was like yeah but I love him he was like what I was like there's just something so funny about him like so real even when he, when he's wrong he's so wrong and it's annoying but when he's right he's yeah. so right and he doesn't back down it's like yes thank you go off no and he's like funny like he's like, funny and just like he's himself now I would never want to date him in my whole right. life could never be his girlfriend I don't think he should be drinking but there's like a lovable affable side to him mm -hmm. that I appreciate and he's a great person on a reality show who has more than you would expect right moments yeah yeah no he just gets like we're so blinded by his like dumb shit like when he just says things about with, like Katie's body like you were just blinded by that but every now and then like he does he does have uh he has his moments yeah and he's just funny. He's like, I don't want to say the S word or the D word. But stupid it's stupid and, and dumb. dumb. <laughs> he's so funny. Um, and now this, James and Katie are an alliance. And I'm sorry. It's, ship. It's, an un, it's an unstoppable force. I don't think they should be together. <laughs> but like the two of them, I would not want them as my enemies. No. I am obsessed. Like the stuff that has been coming out, like the memes, like it's so... It has actually reinvigorated my love for this show. Yeah. I was feeling so fatigued by these characters and these storylines and these plots. But now... Actually, I thought, I thought Raquel and Schwartz just making out was fucking crazy. Like, right. And that was, okay, we have a season because they're going right. to kiss. Right. This? We have a franchise. We have a decade. It's too much. I mean, you could have said the same thing about Jen Shaw, so let's not... Oh, that's true. Like the cart but these before kids, the horse. But they these don't, kids are pros. They don't fumble. These kids are pros. They yeah. don't fumble. The, the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City are all rookies. They don't know. Like, they were ill-equipped. These kids are not. They know. They've seen what the power of this show can do. Yeah. And honestly, a lot of it, a lot of them are in so deep with their restaurants and their businesses. They are not about to let this, this ship go down without a fight. No. And now they have... They literally Land got a ho. life raft. Land, Land ho. ho. Literally. <laughs> yeah. They're not going to fuck this up. I have literally the utmost faith in them. But to be honest, I would love in this very moment to hear from some of our former disgraced cast members, Jax, Of Kristen, course. And, it, you know, people are saying, like, out of all everyone on the cast, like, Jax turned out to be the upstanding guy, the good husband, the, the father. father. Who'd have yeah. thunk? 
who'd have thunk like he would have really kind of nestled into his life after pump rules in such a respectable way he doesn't thirst out tweet live tweeting the episodes like he's totally out of it him and Brittany look so happy they both look really good I would love to hear from them yep Stassi too how dare Stassi you too because she hated how- him the most yeah and you know what she was right she and of right. course Kristen of course I mean and Kristen being the bigger person you know going over to Ariana's and being there for her posting team Ariana like a, a lot of girls wouldn't do that like a lot of girls would still be holding on to a lot of the anger and resentment they have for their their ex's new girl but they've been friends for a while I think Kristen yeah. you know she especially season now like dodged a bullet thanks Ariana Beyond. I mean, how anyone, and not to be mean, but like how anyone could even be remotely attracted to Tom Sandoval. And I don't mean that in a physical sense. I mean, his personality, his midlife crisis, his band. Like, I don't know how you could see someone on stage and then be like, yeah, I want to have sex with that. Like, he's so cringe. Like, the Schwartz's mom, he's so like. The Schwartz's mom. You know who he reminds me of? With like the Bravo fans, like these older women who like love him. It reminds me of Hugh Grant in um, music and lyrics. Like before he blows back up again, he like plays county fairs and there's like five like 50 year old women who were obsessed with his band back in the 80s. Like it's it's really it's it's pathetic. Yeah. But people like that's the show and, and people really do like did like him did. and like go to his shows and like, oh, my God, he's singing about Schwartz's mom. That's so funny. It's it's not though, and so we need to, as a society, discuss why we ever thought that was funny. No, I no, no, I didn't. Never. No, but like people did. Like there was an audience for that, and like yeah. that's actually the real problem. I want to interview the audience members. So I know. Were you genuinely laughing, or like did were like you laughing because you felt bad? Because like that, I understand. <laughs> were you an extra like for the show? Did you buy a ticket? No, and like the way he named his band like Tom Sandoval's and the most extra because like somebody called him extra like two seasons ago when he's like trying to make a moment out of it. Like there are ways to take things people have said about you on the show and like turn it into your own brand. And I think people have done it really successfully. But when you try and it like doesn't catch on and like it's like a flop and you're trying so hard, there's honestly nothing more embarrassing. And just like Ariana is so good to him. Even if they weren't, you know, physically like together anymore. But like when he's trying on all those outfits for his performance I know, I the and same she's thing. taking him seriously being like no well like good but like what else and then be like yes yeah. that's it like could never be me no I would literally sit there and be like I'm gonna be real with you you look like a fucking clown like no but she was blindly supportive and he so did not deserve that and I really feel bad for Ariana but I also am I'm excited we're gonna get like this genesis, this rebirth of Ariana where like the fans are 100% behind her. She's single, she looks great. Like I'm ready. Yeah. This is so crazy. And honestly, I feel like she's gonna keep the house. I feel like she can. I feel like she can too, but does she want to? Does she want a big house? She doesn't seem like the type. I feel like she's kind of like- A penthouse girl. Yeah, like a downtown condo. Mm -hmm. She doesn't wanna be in the suburbs alone. We're literally reverting to like the Vanderpump of yore. Like, yeah, they were all in these apartments that had like, you know, no furniture. And they were just like these young kids with no money. And then they all got like a little too rich. They bought houses, whatever. But then they all started going through divorce and restaurants. And honestly, a lot of them have no money. No, they have money, but you don't need a house when you don't have a like a family. Have a home. Right, right. right, Like a a but yeah, no, to come like, home to. Tom Schwartz is in an apartment now. I think Sheena lives in an apartment. I think Lala does. Yep. Um, not I think even Katie because does. It's not a financial thing. Katie, yeah, now maybe Ariana. But it's not a financial thing. It's like you don't need a, a home when you're a single person. Like, that's, who wants that? Right, no. It's also just like way and easier you don't not to have to. be in like a residential family neighborhood when like now you want to go out all the time and you want to be right. closer to bars and restaurants and you right. want to be able to Uber. Like, you don't need to go all the, like 30 minutes. Yeah, no, honestly, like when they all moved into houses and like Brittany and Jax were talking about how it's like, it's not as great as it looks like Jax was mowing the yard. Like that was funny. Yeah, but Brittany and Jax are still there. Well, and they should be like, they have a kid and they're settled. Like they're not going out. They're just like keeping their heads down and like growing their family. Yeah, so they need a house. Right. No, but we're reverting to the Vanderpump of yore. Yeah. Everyone in these apartments that are like gross. They don't have to be gross. No, but like that's what it was. That's what it was. But they're not going to be gross. Like Katie's not going to no, be no. gross apart. No, not Katie. No, no, no. Not Ariana. No, not Ariana. I wonder if she'll keep the house. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah. It's just been, it's been a time. 
Yeah, they're going to have to speed up these episodes. And also, if I'm the editors, I'm combing through this footage to see if yes. there's moments that I missed. Yep, yep. Combing and that's what every- through. That's what everyone's doing now. Like, they're going through Sheena's vlogs and people's old stories, like, just to see, you know, if there was something we missed. I feel like the editors could maybe find something that they didn't care about and just maybe shift the focus a little bit of the rest of the season. Otherwise, it's going to be dreadful Painful. to watch until we get to this part, but it will be worth it because cameras are up. Yep. And then there's a reunion. Yep. And everyone will be answering for their yeah. sins. The reunion is like my, my next Super Bowl. Yeah, but I think it's also important to remember that like, this is a television show and yet you don't know these people and we can talk about it for entertainment value and, but then like, I don't need to go and leave mean comments on anyone's no, page. No, like no, I, no, I Like, no. I don't know you, you didn't betray me. Like, we are just fans and spectators. Like, calm the fuck down. Yeah. You know? Because it's like, people are not meant to deal with receive and see and deal with this much criticism about themselves no matter what their crime is unless it's murder and you're Alex Murdoch yeah so just keep that in mind keep a level head you guys yeah are you ready for our next story if it's the next story that's brought to you by Squarespace is it it is all right, you guys, whether you're starting a side business, you work in e-commerce, Squarespace is an amazing place to get started with all of their online tools. So from websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful presence online and run your business. So I have built a lot of websites in my day and I feel like it can be really intimidating whether you know you have any experience doing like software engineering or website building and Squarespace is an amazing place to start because they'll help you design a website, they'll help you get your domain and it's really, it's for dummies. Like you don't need a degree in computer science. They have amazing different features um, like email campaigns. You can collect donations, you can share on social media. They'll give you really powerful insights into your analytics, like who's visiting your site, how long they're interacting. Um, you'll get in-depth web- website analytics like page views, traffic sources, etc. Um, also, if you're blogging, their blogging platform supports a configurable share button, lets your visitors share content on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, all the places. So whatever you're building a website for, whether that's e-commerce, blogging, showcasing your photography, Squarespace is a fabulous place to start. Check out squarespace.com slash toast for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use our offer code toast to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. So again, that's squarespace.com slash toast for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use offer code toast to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. Today's episode is also brought to you by Jenny Kane. You are in for a treat because support for today's episode comes directly from Jenny Kane. Think minimalist meets luxury. Jenny Kane items are classic, comfortable, and California in Inspired. From the cashmere or cotton knit sweater you're obsessed with to the flowy summer dress you never want to take off, with elevated everyday basics and wardrobe essentials, getting dressed is easier than ever before. When it comes to investing in an outfit that'll last, we choose Jenny Kane. For a limited time, our listeners are getting 15% off their entire order. When you go to JennyKane.com, use the code TOAST to get 15% off. All right, let's talk Jenny Kane. I have so many items in my home from Jenny Kane Home. I have so many items in my wardrobe from Jenny Kane. Their cashmere sweaters are that bitch like they are really really high quality I feel like it's really good to invest in like a few key pieces that you can have for a really long time I have a cardigan I have a pullover actually that I stole from you it's a v-neck kind of like tan gorgeous like coastal grandmother Jenny Kane is like the coastal grandmother bible Their sweaters are the it item. You will get so many compliments. Their everyday sweater, their striped Chloe crew neck sweater, their cardigans are made so you can feel the difference. It's the high-end necklace that you can wear on repeat because it goes with so many things. So they're known for their staple cashmere sweaters. So their best-selling cocoon cardigan, which I have. It's ultra cozy, a relaxed fit. And if you haven't tried their mules or sandals, you haven't felt true comfort. Jenny Kane believes in one thing, the art of simplicity with a focus on comfort, quality, and timeless design. Find your forever pieces at JennyKane.com. Our listeners get 15% off your first order when you use code TOAST at checkout. That's 15% off your first order at J-E-N-N-I-K-A-Y-N-E.com, promo code TOAST. The brand go-to for all season staples. Treat yourself because you deserve it. Thank you, Claudia. You're welcome. Our next story, Chris Rock did his live Netflix comedy special, Selective Outrage, and he's mentioning it all. He shredded Will Smith with Oscar slap joke, slap joke, said, quote, everyone called him a bitch, and who does he hit? Me. Almost a year after the infamous Oscar slap, comedian Chris Rock finally addressed what happened in his live Netflix special. After an hour of new material that only alluded to Slapgate, he said in the beginning, 
he said, quote, they say words hurt. Anybody who says words hurt has never been punched in the face. So that was at the top of the show. He didn't get back into the slap or anything. I thought that was kind of going to be it. Um, but no, he did like a whole five to ten minutes going in on what happened. He said, quote, you all know what happened to me getting smacked by Suge Smith. Everybody knows. Everybody fucking knows. I got smacked like a year ago. And people are like, did it hurt? It still <laughs> hurts. I got summertime ringing in my ears. Despite the pressure from the press to open up about what happened, he's adamant that he won't be dis- dissecting it on a talk show. He said, quote, I'm not a victim, baby. You will never see me on Oprah or Gail crying. You will never see it. It's never going to happen. Fuck that shit. I took that shit like Pacquiao. You know, I thought that was a really good response. One, because it harked back to like a big segment he did in his special about how everyone is a victim these days. We're always saying that, like searching for victimhood. Everyone yeah. wants to be a victim. Um, But also it was a nice little dig at Will Smith because like Will Smith got up there and slapped fucking Chris Rock and then Will Smith went on TED Table Talk 400 times and cried like making himself the victim. So I like how Chris Rock not only like harked back to previous material but he was also like I'm not a victim even though technically like in this saga like he was the victim of a slap like you're gonna go and cry okay bitch like I'm gonna stand up here and make jokes about it. Yeah I love TED Table Talk but um (laughs) (laughs) by the way he really went hard. I honestly thought he like wouldn't want to be associated with this anymore and like he was kind of using it for clickbait for his special I like I honestly didn't know if he was still like angry or if he was ever really angry but he's fucking mad and you know what he called Will Smith a bitch he called Jada Pinkett Smith a predator which honestly it's a pretty decent call because I didn't really put together that that dumb entanglement thing was with one of her son's friends like that's fucking weird and I also didn't know that like beyond the slap like beyond the surface there's actually history with Jada Will and Chris as it pertains to the Oscars like Jada was really upset when Chris Rock agreed to host it all those years ago because Will Will wasn't wasn't nominated wasn't nominated and so I didn't realize that it was layered beyond that So he was like, he was digging, yeah, at Jada. Like he was, you know, he was starting stuff with that joke, G.I. Jane, but because there was history there. Yeah, and 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 now, but no, because he he was slapped. Hosts and presenters like make lots of little jokes at people. Like, yeah, a slap for Mm. a joke. It doesn't even matter. Like, Chris could have said the most disgusting joke of all time, and it still wouldn't have warranted a slap. Like, you don't fucking slap people. Right. And so. Now he's going in on them and what happened and how I guess Chris even called him when everything like went down with the entanglement like and to like be there for him and mm-hmm. instead he slaps him and it's like everybody right. was talking shit about Will Smith and like clowning on him and he slaps and Chris, Chris Rock and he, but that's who he slaps and also he talks about how Will Smith is so much bigger than him like they're yeah. not the same size they're it's not a fair fight like he's a big guy and his slap fucking hurts yeah honestly like I I was almost prepared to be disappointed because I feel like Chris I just thought Chris Rock would have been like moved on from it and like he's like we're good just like above it yeah and I'm so glad he wasn't because you know what you got fucking slapped and sometimes you just need to go for the jugular yeah I don't know why I thought he would like not be as mad as he is yeah no me too like I don't know why I kind of I just perceive him maybe it's because he's like this comedy legend as someone who's just like above shit like this but you know what like Will Smith dragged him down to the trenches and Chris Rock is joining him and I respect that like I hate that shit like rise above no couldn't be me but he still no but he still is above it because he's not getting physical he's using his words right right like a grown up I was actually really pleased with the response. Like, he's mad. And you know what? That's a human response. Yeah. And, like, he took a year to say, to figure out what he wanted to say, when he wanted to say it, how he wanted to say it. And, like, there's nothing rash about this. And I also appreciate that he's saying it all. He's mentioning it all. And he's mentioning yeah. the entanglement and all the things I could have said about Will Smith. But right. I didn't. But I right. will now. No, it's true. Like, him and Jada really like for many years like dragged their relationship in the public sphere it's not like they were being dragged they put themselves there they kind of like embarrassed themselves and their families over and over so when you think of the birth of not birth is it breadth 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 of material that you could write about these two really gi jane is is harmless and i know like she has alopecia so i get why it's layered but to be honest the rationale for why the joke might have been insensitive is irrelevant now because you got up and slapped someone like to me 
I don't give a shit what you have to say. I don't care about your victimhood. You are wrong in perpetuity because you slap someone. Yeah. And I feel like for the last year, like Will Smith has been dipping his toe in his PR Come cycle, back. you know. And now Will, uh, Chris Rock is just like back down yeah. again. Start That's again. True, Start because really honestly, getting. I had forgotten and whatever. But now, I thought like, like Chris was over it, so I'm over it. Right. Now we're reliving it. Like Chris is like such a cutie. You know, he came on that special. He's like this family man, like uh -huh. talking about his kids. He's so cute. He was so funny. He made some really good points. I was enjoying the special. And I'm like, you know what? Now I'm feeling protective again of Chris Rock. Mm -hmm. And he's mad. So I'm mad. It's like, it's all, it's starting all over again, which must be really infuriating for Will Smith. Anything he did in the last year to try and overcome totally. it. We're back at square one. A hundred percent. And you know what? I love that Chris like didn't give an interview and he saved this moment for himself. I'm sure he sold the shit out of this special, not only because it was, you know, the first time he was talking about Will Smith, but it was also this technological marvel of live streaming on Netflix. I love that he kept it for himself. It's like, you know, us doing it on the Patreon. hundred percent. Plus he's Chris I love Rock. That. So, and they invest in comedy on Netflix. Like he probably got paid so much. I, I, I can't imagine he got paid less than $20 million. For one special, one live? Yeah. It's possible that this was a part of like a three special deal. Like yeah, Jerry they Seinfeld like to did do that. three specials for 60. So, but this is different. You know, it's live. Live television, people. Chris Rock. It's Chris Rock live show. It's Chris Rock live. Do, 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 do. Chrissy do, Rock do. would be better because it's 30 Rock. Chrissy Rock. Chrissy. No, too many syllables somehow. No, 30. Chrissy. I know, but it's. They don't say 30 Rock. They say live show. It's 30 it's Rock Live. It's 30 Rock Live show. It's, live it's Crazy show. Rock Live. It's Crazy Rock Live show. Yeah, it's, it's literally perfect. It felt this, so, just as good the way I was singing it. Um, the, the, special special otherwise, the special otherwise. The special. The special otherwise was good. It wasn't like amazing, but it was really good and funny. Oh, I thought it was really strong. I thought he made some really good points, some really good jokes. Oh my God, I was telling you how I was. Cackling. I can't remember the last time I laughed so hard at a, at a joke from a comedy special is when he was talking about the difference between dating financially, the difference financially between dating older women and younger women. And when he really said, funny. for an older woman, you have to pay. No, for a younger woman, it's like the she'll, shoes. Be, she'll be like, I want shoes. Give me one pair of shoes, 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 shoes. And then for an older woman, she's like, can you fix my roof? It was really funny. Oh my God. Honestly, I couldn't even hear the next five minutes because I literally, if I was further along my pregnancy, I think I would have given birth. Zach yeah. and I were tears. Tears That's laughing. Funny. I thought it was funny. I didn't think it was like tears funny. I don't know it was why. Funny. I was just waiting to see what he was going to say. Like, what does an older woman want a house? Like, I didn't right. know. And she wants you to fix her roof. Like, it was so funny. He's also making headlines for his bit about Meghan Markle, which yes. I thought was really interesting. So let's talk about that. And then that's actually going to lead into our next story. Um, so he had a bit about the ways that people... It was the same, it was the same bit we were talking about earlier, like just victimhood. Like yes, everyone wants to be a victim of something. But he was saying that America, we're addicted to attention. There's four ways to get attention, you know. Uh, you could be... Put your ass on Instagram. Put your ass out. You could be infamous. You could be excellent mm -hmm. or Serena you Williams. could be a victim. Right. And he said, and speaking of, you know, Meghan Markle and her journey to victimhood and everything that she shared. And he's talked about, you know, how she like the things that she said on Oprah and how, uh, you know, you didn't know the royal family was racist, like they invented racism. And then he started talking about a few of the things that she said to, you know, uh, exhibit how they were racist. and he was like that's not racism that's like in-law shit right right so it was just really funny and she doesn't get a, a really any negative negative press in the u.s aside from that south park thing that was a few weeks ago which we yes. heard that they didn't like and that uh they were upset about but then we heard that no they didn't care and so yeah. i feel like to go from like being you know so celebrated and not and no one will say a bad word to that South Park episode and then this, which is like the, one of the biggest comedy moments this year and he's like really going in on them. Um, they are, must not be happy. To be honest, it was, it was refreshing because I feel like co what comedy is really supposed to do is be the thing you think but don't say. And we li exist in a culture, in the, and I think it's, it's out of a protectiveness for Megan, which I appreciate. I think it started from a good place. But you really can't, criticize Harry and Meghan without being 
you know, labeled as something. And so for Chris Rock to get on here and just kind of say the thing we were all thinking, like, I don't know, some of the stuff they described, like, is it evil? No. Is it like, do I deal with the same shit with my in-laws? Kind of. Like, it's, it was refreshing to hear. And that's really what comedy is supposed to be. And so to hear someone who probably has a lot to lose by saying that, I'm sure he could hobnob with Harry and Meghan at Ellen's house whenever he wants. I don't know that that's a lot to lose, though, not getting the invite. No, but I'm saying, like, he could run into Harry and Meghan tomorrow. Like, honestly. Like, him saying that is brave. It's not like some nobody comic on a, pod, a oh, podcast agreed. saying it. But he doesn't, I don't think he, there's a lot to lose by not being able to run into them and it being awkward. You know what I mean? Like, I think no, it's worth No, I think it he for puts himself joke. in a bad position. Like, he's, he's on the same level of fame. Yeah. So he puts himself kind of, perhaps as a target or... Or it, putting himself in a bad spot. And for him to say it means he really believes it. And I think a lot of people in the audience agreed with it. And I think people watching at home is like, well, yeah, like, I mean, we all think that, but no one yeah. can say it. And yeah. that's what comedy is. That's the purpose of comedy. Yeah, but I feel like the more time that they spend in Hollywood, I'm constantly shocked by how few friends it seems that they have. And well, how Rebel few Wilson. Things, Rebel Wilson is our next story. But how okay. few things that they should be at that they're not at. Mech Ella. When you zoom out, it's like, why aren't they spotted at dinner with this and that and, and them and them? Like, we never hear that. The only really things that we see, one, the Ellen party, which we reference every single time we say where you could see them. Yep. And in the documentary, the people who called her after the Oprah interview, Beyonce called her. Yeah. Does she text with Beyonce today? Right, no. They. It's almost like, well, why do they even live in L.A.? Yeah, but like they're not at the Met Gala. They are not at like the, some of these big birthday parties for some of the really big stars. Like, I don't know if Hollywood's going how they thought it was going to go. That's a good point. And, and I, a good segue to, to our Rebel next Wilson, story. Because which I, would I found say, really interesting. I don't know why they wouldn't be embraced by Hollywood. Because um, it seems like right after they left the family, they were. They Oprah mm -hmm. went well and everything. Um, but Rebel Wilson was on, on Watch What Happens Live talking about meeting Harry and Meghan. And while she said really sweet things about Harry, she said Meghan was not naturally warm. So That's so funny because that's what Meghan said about Kate. Oh, that is funny. That is, And I feel like Meghan's brand that she puts forth is just like this warm... First, the warm American hugger, you know? Right, right, right. <laughs> Rebel Wilson says she did not get a warm reception from Meghan when she first met the Duchess of Sussex. She said Meghan was not as cool. She wasn't as naturally warm. However, she noted that Markle could have been standoffish uh, due to her mom, her Australian mom, asking slightly rude questions like, where are your kids? Rebel said, no, that mom, is fucking rude. don't ask her that. They said they met because they had a mutual friend, um... And Harry was really warm and sweet and that Meghan was not the way that Harry was. And she didn't mince words. Yeah, no, no I was words surprised for her. I was surprised for her to be like so direct and like shady. And I um, feel like actually like Rebel has more to lose saying just this about Meghan yeah, and Harry. Course. Because she's not on the same level as Chris Rock where it's like Chris Rock is a legend, period. Doesn't matter who he offends. Yeah. I was really surprised. Yes, me too. But I also feel like we're always saying here, like, okay, one, referencing one time meeting someone, like, isn't a fair assessment of their character. Like, maybe she had a long day. Maybe she was in a bad mood. Maybe she felt awkward. Maybe she doesn't like Rebel Wilson. Like, maybe she heard Rebel Wilson say something about her. You know what I mean? Like, I don't feel like it's actually inaccurate. But I'm adding it just, it's it's noted. But I'm not going to make a general, uh, observ not observation, general, I'm having a hard time with the words today. General, like, Judgment. Statement. Judgment, sure. On one person's one time. It's not like Megan said, I can't talk. Rebel said, oh, every time I've met Megan, she's been a bitch. Like, it was one time, and you know what? Um, it's noted, but I'm not making any big, any big statements yet. I'll say two things about that. One, we say this all the time. I hate when people on TikTok are like, so-and-so was rude, and they, like, have these anecdotal reasons as to why they're rude and they don't even tell you who it is but I feel like the fact that she said this and it seemed like she said it in the commercial break and then repeated it yes because she said we were just talking about this in the break so she repeated it again on television the fact that she would say it was her not just like oh I, I hobnob with someone who you would think was so warm but really it wasn't, wasn't anonymous she would say it was her. She would not be like but maybe oh, well actually did she did say maybe she was she put did. off by my mom asking rude questions 
I don't think it's so rude to say, where are your kids? If I'm out and some, like someone said, where's Harry? I would just think that, not rude, just dumb. Like, he's home. What do you think? No, it depends, like, who you are. Like, if you're easily offended and you're like, are you judging my mother? It also depends on what the... Um, context where we are like if we're in the park having a picnic like where are your kids like they could they be here but But if we're at a cocktail party at a dinner party where are my kids like they're asleep when she lives right they're with they're with the sitter sitter yeah like so it depends on the context i don't think it's like like overall the rudest question um the fact that she like just didn't mince words i i'm no i find it i i found the whole thing extremely interesting yeah especially since that's like harry's supposed to be like the british stiff upper lip and she's like the warm Warm american american and we got the opposite so i thought that was interesting no i just also appreciate when people share their anecdotes like i'm always wondering what's going on behind closed doors yeah no one no one's like shares stuff like this so about anyone no i know like very just direct and honest how you felt in the moment i feel like rebel must have had like a really nasty experience with her it must have been worse to then just say not naturally warm. No, it wasn't it just like a, an unnatural warmth that she felt the need to share. It yeah. must have been worse. Yeah. It's not a good month for Harry and Meghan. I feel like actually it hasn't been a good few months. I don't think the reception to the book and the documentary was really what they thought. The book reception was better, but the documentary reception was not great. Um, but the book sales think, were great. So yes. they have like a lot of money. But he already got paid the 20 million for three books. So they already cashed those checks. I think. I think they care just about public perception and image as they do about money. Yes, but they have to care about both. Yeah. Like, yeah. They, 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 like you can't have, long term, you can't have one without the other. And they need both. It's not like yeah. they're part of the family anymore. The family yeah. just gets to worry about public perception. So true. Which but they have to in worry, way. worry about those things while also trying to make money. Yeah. Like and, parallel to the money. Yeah. And people like, you know, when you do stuff for money, they judge you as like, what did you sell for that? You sold right, your family. Right, I'm going right. to fucking judge you. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it hasn't been a great, like, six months, honestly. Yeah. They need to lay low. They're, nobody They've been regretted. laying low, except they went to dinner the other night. No, dinner doesn't count. I mean, put, Harry no. just did another sit-down interview, mental health. Like, Oh, my God. The trauma to, expert. Like, the, that was a disaster. They need to stop opening up their legs for us. Like, it's enough. They need, it, nobody ever regretted laying low. Agreed. Aside from that interview, which he, I feel like he does all these interviews and, like, does anybody fucking watch them? Because I only like see them. The excerpts. Yeah. But anyways, they went to dinner. Of course, they're allowed to go to dinner. But it was like, you yeah. know, paparazzi were there. That doesn't they were bother me. Dressed. Honestly, I feel like those moments actually are in the plus column for me because they look really happy. She always looks stunning. I actually love seeing paparazzi But that's not laying low. Why? No, you're allowed to go to dinner. I'm talking about no, months No, there's a difference months. between going to dinner to eat a meal and going to dinner we're going to San Vicente bungalows and the paparazzi have been called that stuff doesn't bother me for me it was like the weeks and months of promo for the documentary promo for the book sit down interviews 60 minutes BBC everything now this trauma expert like that for people who really left for for their mental health and for privacy stop close your legs to married men like stop that shit bothers me. Actually, the paparazzi San Vicente bungalows, like, that's what I expected. That's what I was like, oh, yes, they're coming to Hollywood. Let's see the glamour. Get out of the car. What are you wearing? She loves a good coat. Like, that is exciting. Yeah. That is what I want to see. And they don't do a lot of that. Not even, they could go to dinner and call the paparazzi whenever they want, but like, they're but not they don't at do these it a lot. big parties. They're not at these big events. They could be at the Oscars presenting. They're not. And, and by the way, that type of thirst would actually be, be good for them. That's because that's an elevated thirst. Glamour. And that's, that's Hollywood. What I'm saying is like, what's surprising about their role in Hollywood is it's not the role I would have thought that they would have leaving the royal family and being like the A-listers that they are. Right. And it appears as though it's not a choice because if they were choosing not to be Hollywood glamour, then they wouldn't be doing all these sit-down interviews. So it's not that they don't want to be in the spotlight because they do, but they're choosing the most bizarre spotlights. No, and the ones that are the big spotlights are seemingly not available to them. Like, I don't know. You know? Yeah, I don't know. Because they would do it. Like, why aren't they going to, I'll, I'll, they should be going to the Vanity Fair Oscar party this year. Yeah, they should be going to the Oscars. They could be presenting at the maybe, Oscars. And maybe, it could okay. be like a, you know, a charitable award, something. Even though. Sure, yes, right, the same right. for the Grammys and all the other crap we just watch and the. Right, where they bring like elected officials. 
Yeah, in the same way that like they're just like humanitarians. Okay, you know what? They've been like out and about, like very public. I would be very interested if they do anything at the Oscars. Okay, maybe not presenting, but showing up at that Vanity Fair party for a photo. That would be interesting. But then to me, the idea that they couldn't get invited to the Vanity Fair Oscar party, it sounds absurd. Of course they could. Right, so is it a choice? I don't know. But there's like, I don't know. We'll see. So. Are you ready for our next story? What number is this? Four? Four. All right. Pete Davidson and his girlfriend, Chase C. Wonders, crashed their car into Beverly Hills' home. I saw this is a very nefarious smelling story. Pete Davidson and his girlfriend, Chase Sui Wonders, crashed their car into a Beverly Hills home Saturday night, please confirm to the Post. The SNL alum had been driving a Mercedes-Benz at a high rate of speed around 11 p.m. when he jumped a curb in the Flats neighborhood. He reportedly also hit a fire hydrant and skidded across the front lawn before slamming into the corner of the house. The siding on one corner of the home was broken and pushed inward, according to photos of the damage obtained by TMZ. Beverly Hills Police confirmed to the Post that the car crash had occurred and damaged city property, the fire hydrant, and that it was, in fact, Pete behind the wheel. A police spokesperson refused to provide further details as the department's investigation is ongoing. Both of them walked away unharmed. And what about the people in the house? People in the house are fine. No, no, in, no injuries or anything. Late night, driving fast, residential neighborhood. This doesn't smell good to me. No. This is no bueno. And you know what? Bad decision making. And it, bad. The preliminary view, according to TMZ, is that drugs and alcohol were not involved here. But an oh. investigation is currently underway. I mean, a preliminary view, like, they can do a blood alcohol test on him when they Show arrive. Um, as far as weed, how do you test for that? You test like a drug test, like normal. Okay, so maybe, I don't know if... But by the way, like, he's going to have weed in his system. Can can you, you can't be high and drive. That's a really good question. I feel like you can. No way. I mean, I feel people do, but like, I don't know what the levels of fucked upness are. Right. But like, weed stays in your system, I think, for 30 days. You take a drug test. It's like, yeah, well, I smoked weed a week ago. No, but it's like, if you take it on site, there's got to be a way. Like, literally, we're sending people to the Mars. Like, you can find out how high someone is. How do you, though, seriously, like, jump a curb, hit a fire hydrant, and drive into someone's house if you're not even the slightest bit impaired? Yeah. Unless you have, like, a medical, like, you have a heart stroke. Right, but they seem, they were fine at the scene. Right. Um, so, or, so like, this the is car, fishy. you know, went rogue. Out. This is fishy for sure. Nefarious yeah. behavior, and I don't want to make any judgments until it's judgment day, but this is terrible. Yeah, I'm glad they're both okay. I'm glad everyone in the house is okay. But now we need to get down to the bottom of it because it sounds like, sounds like Pete is making some bad decisions. Yeah. And that worries me because he's a good boy. He may be spending too much time in LA. He's got to go back to Staten Island. You know, those hedonistic Los Angelines. Yeah. Los Angelinos. Los Angelinos. So we'll keep you posted on that because I do want to know what happened here because it's very concerning. 100%. Are you ready for our next story? Fifth and final. Is it the last story that's brought to you by Canva? It is. Creating visual content is an essential part of what we do here. But the creative process hasn't always been so easy. All you have to do is scroll down to our Instagrams of your and see some of the turnt graphics we used to churn out before we started using Canva for all of our needs. Whenever we have guest cards or graphics, everything we make for social, we make on Canva. And we found Canva for, t- Canva for Teams. It has been so easy to collaborate and design with our team, which makes the whole process so much more creative and fun. So Canva for Teams is a design platform that makes it easy for anyone to create stunning content in any format. From social media posts to videos, presentations, websites, the endless templates and premium fonts, photos, graphics, and videos add personality and edge to our team's content. I have to say, Ben introduced us to Canva because he used to use it back when he was like working at corporate agencies. And he was like, it's the best, it's the best. And really, he revitalized our brand for us, like creative directed our brand. And when you use Canva for Teams, they make it easy to maintain your aesthetic, add your own logos, fonts, colors, anything that you want to create. 
So um, they streamline how you can use social, social media t too. You can plan, create, and share social media content directly to all of your channels from one place and even post, uh, schedule posts ahead of time. So collaborate with your Canva, with your team, with Canva for Teams. Right now, you can get a free 45-day extended trial when you go to canva.me slash toast. That's C-A-N-V-A dot M-E slash toast for a free 45-day extended trial. Canva.me slash toast. Thank you. Yeah, Our fifth and final story, some nostalgic but also forward-thinking news. Miley Cyrus is teaming up with Disney again for Endless Summer Vacation concert special. Miley Cyrus announced on Friday that she is re-teaming with Disney for a new concert special. The former Hannah Montana star will perform her number one single, Flowers, plus seven other songs from her upcoming album, Endless Summer Vacation, for the latest installment of her Backyard Sessions. Mm. Additionally, the set list will include one of her chart topping classics the climb as well as a collaboration with rufus wainwright according to a press release obtained by page six the special which is interspersed with new interview footage premieres march 10th at 1 p.m eastern time on disney plus the same day that her lp drops Okay, like Miley giving us Backyard Sessions. If you remember the OG Backyard Sessions, like it was kind of this like transitional period for Miley. It was like before her solo career really took off, after she like left Hannah Montana forever, she was just like this, you know, down home country, all American girl. And she like was just posting these YouTube videos of her singing in her backyard with like an accompaniment, maybe like a drummer and a guitarist. And it was like these really high quality videos. Her, I think most popular one is Jolene. She, that was like her iconic long brown hair era and like bow ho outfits bun. bun she wore a bun on that one um it was so like we were so obsessed with miley at that point and hannah montana ended and like we really didn't know what the future held i believe maybe she had released party in the usa but we were like we were literally desperate for anything miley could give us and what she gave us was the backyard sessions and they became so iconic and she didn't even do that many because then her solo career really took off and she didn't have to slum it in her backyard for youtube anymore and, and her sound it. changed a little bit. Then she was with bangers and like that's not yeah. like an acoustic backyard vibe because she's constantly changing, evolving. But the way that she knows how much those meant to us and she's bringing it, like I'm, I'm deeply moved. This is so thoughtful. It is. They were a cultural reset for sure and they continue to have impact. impact. Like people are still watching them. People are still talking about them. You know, I'm sure they're on TikTok clipped all the time. Mm -hmm. And and she's bringing it back and the fact that she's bringing it back with Disney Plus just it's shows just like all's well and that's good it's really full circle you know because she could have gone to any streamer and if she had such negative feelings about Disney it would not be Disney yeah but true. this like just goes to show like we're okay everything was okay Hannah was good I'm okay with everything here's the backyard sessions no you're right I'm, I'm actually getting like choked up this is really beautiful yeah, she's going back to her roots. And she's singing the climb 2023 edition. I'm so excited. She sings the climb quite frequently and, and she never does a bad job. And she always adds like something new, a little twang, a new note, a new pitch. She really always does that song justice. And the way she like protects that song for us is actually really sweet like that song means so much to so many of her fans and I think you know a lot of people were always talking about how they you know they kind of shy away from the thing and no matter how big Miley gets like people will always want to go to her concerts and and hear the climb and she always leaves that opportunity like that potential possibility for us and she always does the song justice and like I, I really want to thank her for that because she loves the song and she knows that we love it and like the fact that she loves it makes us love it more no and I think that we love this song so much but there are so many things from like you know back in the day that you would love just because of the nostalgia but I think coincidentally like the climb is an absolutely beautiful song and the lyrics and the message are eternal and so yep. she's not like embarrassed by it it's not like the Jonas Brothers going and singing year 3000 which is just right. a gimmick like this Pizza is a song girl yeah this is a song that like means something it's a beautiful song it's something that could be released today and it's just like a gorgeous song it's not just because we're not asking her to perform best of both worlds you know right no it's, it's a mature fact it's a song even, that feels like a real song but the fact that she can even see through all the hannah stuff to be like oh that is a real beautiful song that just happened to fall into my lap as hannah 
just it shows a maturity on her part not to shun everything from Hannah as like corny, bad Disney nonsense. No, you're right. The message is really evergreen. Evergreen. Life's a climb. There's always going to be another great. mountain. That's not even the lyrics. No, I know, but that's like the message of the song. That was ins- what's inspired her. The message is there's always going to be another mountain, period. I'm always going to want to make it move. Always going to be an uphill battle. Sometimes yep. I'm going to have to lose. Ain't about how fast I get there, damn straight. Ain't about what's waiting on the other side. Facts. It's the climb. Facts. Straight facts. No lies were told. Zero. Absolutely none. And that's a message we could all use every day in every way. Jackie, that's beautiful. Thank you, Turtle Lou. It's the climb. So good. I won't, I won't. I won't spiral, but like I could. You could. When those violins come in. She better have a full string orchestra orchestra in the backyard session or else we're going to have problems. Sometimes you're going to have to lose. Ain't about how fast. Such a good song. Ain't about what's waiting on the other side. It's the climb. Yay. Yay. Keep on moving. Keep climbing. Keep the faith, baby. Dun, 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 dun. It's all about, it's all about the climb. This would be like me singing Don't Rain on My Parade. Like, it's just her. Oh, oh, I can't sing the climb? Like, not on this show, no. Jesus. That's the where way, I'll, that's where I'll put so, my stake in the ground. I'm so glad you brought that up. Sing Don't Rain on My Parade. Do it. No, I would never do that to you, Turtle. No, yeah. by the way. Oh, I and ju- the fact that, like, we know you're a better singer than me. You take my one song. You took my Jackie, one song that I've been sorry. practicing okay. my whole okay, life. Okay, fine. I'll, I won't sing it, but, like, genuinely, I would like to hear you sing Don't Rain on My Parade. No, like, you're missing I, the point. I don't want to. No, but like I, I like I'm no. asking. I'm not so, trying to make a point. So you can make fun of me. So you no, can make no. fun. No, it'll be good. Come on, please. It will not be good. Please. Just Liter- like five seconds, like five bars. No, Come there's on. literally like no part of me that's like dr- drumming up to sing the song. Like it's not happening. Come on, give the people what they want. That's not what they want, Turdy Lou. They want me singing the climb. I don't think so. They love when I sing the climb. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Fine. Wow. Jackie backing down from a challenge. Noted. Yeah. Note it. Note it. That's our show. That was a long one. We had so much to discuss. I feel better. Like I took a big dump of words. Yummy. Reminder that this is our first of three episodes this week. I'm not here Thursday, Friday. I'm heading out of the country, just like global cosmopolitan jet setting girl. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday this week is a short week. So we got we gave you a long episode. Maybe split this one in two. Same no, well, our plan is assuming that like oh, yeah. you know, we're able to be uh, you know, nothing arises that Thursday and Friday we will drop Patreon episodes so that you have content if you're a Patreon member and you can always become a Patreon member if you're not one yet. So if you are a fully immersed toaster, you actually will have episodes all days this week. Yeah, true. Okay, thanks for reminding for me. For the FETs. Thank you guys so much for listening to The Toast. I really mean that. The Millennial Morning Show, where we deliver the fast five stories that you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. We're also available as a podcast pretty much anywhere podcasts can be found. So it's Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Public Radio, iRadio, CastBox, all the places where you listen to podcasts. My Nessa Toast, leave a five-star review about how beautiful, stunning, and wickedly talented we are. Hope you guys have, like, literally the best day. The best day, for real. That's and so we'll see you tomorrow. Sweet. That's so sweet. I'm a, I'm a sweet girl. It's so sweet, Turdy Lou. I, I hope you have a really great day, too. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye. We will. See you tomorrow. Love ya. Bye.